All right, welcome back to the cab of my truck. It is a beautiful Tuesday morning here in Utah. We're uh, going to be hitting right around 90 degrees today, so I look forward to uh, getting my work done as quick as possible in the truck and then uh, getting switched over to the bike, running some errands, save some fuel. We are up here in Layton, Utah, I'm getting off here on what's called Antelope Drive. I actually used to live up here in this area for a short period of time. I had a government contract with the uh, military. There's a base up here called Hill Air Force Base. And during my years as a uh, web developer, I jumped around from different contract to different contract doing um, security projects. And I had one up here for about a year. So I moved up here and uh, lived on the other side of a park from my older brother, Tony who works up here now for the same company that makes that little device right there called Edge Products. Anyhow, uh, this Ford F-250 that we're coming to repossess today has got a little bit of history. We uh, had a triple header on it at one time, the F-250 plus a trailer plus two motorcycles, which the two motorcycles were on the trailer, so I call that a you know, the, the two bikes, each one being an individual piece of collateral, they had a title on each one of those, and the trailer was small enough that there was no title on it, and then they had a title on the F-250. So there were three three titles, three pieces of collateral, we call that a triple header. Uh, we came up here multiple times on that account. Uh, each time the truck was locked in the garage, uh, and the two uh, third bikes were always in a rear shed that we could never get to. The wife worked at the hospital right here where we just exited off the freeway. It's the Davis Hospital right there. And uh, we shot up here a couple times thinking we might catch the uh, white Ford F-250 here at the parking lot because we knew that she was driving it. But never did locate it. And every time we got went to the given address, it was locked in the garage. But we got probably four or five different closes on that account um, over the course of a couple of years. Anyhow... That F-250 got sold to a friend of theirs, and he has not been making the payments on it. And they actually, uh, the finance company sent over some notes, and they said that they've spoken with the wife, and she says that the husband has seen the truck uh, there at work. It's a it's this huge complex over here. It's an enormous. I mean, it's called the Freeport Center. Matter of fact, if you look on this, my mapping software, this thing is so big. It's got its own zip code. It's this huge gray area we're coming up on right here. It's a huge gated industrial complex that's got a couple hundred warehouses in it. If you don't know exactly which warehouse you're going to, it's next to impossible to find a vehicle in here because there's just thousands and thousands of uh, vehicles in this complex. And so we actually do have the building number, the business name, and the uh, unit number that we're going to to try to find this F-250, but they, they claim that the guy's just trashing the truck. They were pretty uh, clear about the fact that they just weren't happy with the way he had been treating the vehicle after they had sold it to him, but you know, once you sell a vehicle to someone, they can do with it as they please, but they had passed on the information to the finance company that he was just making comments to the fact that he just had no plans on paying on the loan and other things that I'm not going to mention, but when we get information like this, it really makes you wonder the, the mentality and the type of upbringing a person uh, has been given to be this way, you know. This is the beginning of the building complexes right here. There have been times that when I've tried to come up here in the past in a repo truck that looks like a tow truck that we have not been able to get through the gates, they would not allow us into the complex. There's like a security gate we have to go through. Looks like they've changed it. Yeah, there used to be a big thing right here that you had to go through with a security officer and they've taken all that out. Now it looks like we can drive right in here. Take a look real quick and see if we can find our building here. B11, there they are right there. From here, we'll figure out where 
up over there, and we're looking for, okay, so you wanna go straight, almost to the end, and then two rows over for our building. It's always nice when they have a big map like that to locate things. But yeah, we're gonna get over here and we're gonna see if we can put eyes on this uh, white F-250. And being that it's an F-250, I mean, my truck's an F-250 as well, but I've got the frame and the lift and the suspension and the airbags all beefed up to make it to where this truck can pick up heavier vehicles. But if I get an F-250 that's got anything in the bed loading it down, uh, it makes it almost impossible to be able to pick up like a normal repo. And so we're gonna have to get over here. Plus, if it's got large oversized tires, that can affect our ability to be able to pick it up. There's a white F-250, the same exact wheels my truck has. Newer body style. So yeah, we'll be over here in just a second, get eyes on this thing and uh, see what we can figure out, get ourselves a repo. This assignment was actually placed on hold last week before we got a chance to come up here and run it the first time. The guy actually called in and made a promise to pay. And that was supposed to have been by yesterday. So, we didn't make that payment. Let's see if we can get his attention today. Okay, here's the building. All right, I didn't see it along the front side here, so what we'll do now is we'll put the Huey and go down that main road. down there. Sometimes they'll have a couple of buildings that'll be a business big enough they'll have multiple. Locations. See this this one right here is lifetime and that one over there is lifetime so that right there's what I'm talking about they'll have multiple buildings. So there's a possibility that white F-250 I saw back there could be it as well but First things first, we always want to make sure we check around the entire building of the main company and then from there spread out and see if we can locate alternate locations within inside this complex. We do have a home address on him as well, a given address, so it turns out that we don't see the truck here at work. Then we'll just shoot up here to the given address in this his day off, you know. Always have that possibility as well. Looks like they might have some parking in the rear back here as well. It's a Chevy. Not seen it around the building. Oh, we'll cruise over here to this next street over. Go we'll check that white F-250 that I saw. The next building over. If that's not it, then we'll jump out of here and we'll go head up to uh, the next town just north of here. It's called Roy. And that's where the given address is. And we'll go see if maybe this is his day off or possibly we caught him, caught him at lunchtime. It is 12:30 the afternoon so there's always a possibility that he's on his lunch break as well and we have another one we've got to run while we're up here in the area so oh yeah see here's this right here is same company yeah so we don't he's not necessarily working in that building uh, this one's right here is I'm gonna have to circle around this whole building Maybe he's, there's, I, saw, I saw some parking on the back side. A lot of times, too, I'll find an employee out in front of one of these buildings, and I'll ask them, I'll be like, hey, how many different buildings are you guys in? guy sitting right inside there right now. I'm gonna cruise down here and see if I find some, yeah, there's more parking back here behind this building. There's an employee walking right here right now. I'm gonna ask him if he uh, 
I don't see the truck when I pop around this corner. I'm going to get this guy's attention if I can. Hey, you work for... How many locations do they have here? Just the two. This one and the main one? Yeah, this one and the... Which one are you looking for? I don't know. I, I went by H11 and then I... And the, the guy I was looking for wasn't over there. So I didn't know if he... You know him? What department is working? I don't know. They just gave me... Well, this is J8. J8 is like the warehouse. We have just warehouse and T-slots down here. Okay. But if, uh, if they gave you H11, then that would be... The main one? The main one. That's where you're supposed to be, yeah. Okay, cool. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. So, yeah, I'm going to go back over to where I saw that F-250. Just one street down from... H11. Now I know I don't need to worry about there being multiple buildings other than these two. Never want to be afraid to just pull over and ask questions and look for opportunities to get information from people that have the information inside their head. It's the best kind of skip tracing you can do. So I've sent a uh, text message over to the uh, finance officer so that he knows. I've already gone out to the place of employment that the truck's not showing up there right now because of the fact that I've made contact with one of his co-workers. It's always a possibility. You never know that they're going to pick up the cell phone and be like, hey, there was just some guy out here asking about you, you know? And so you want to always make sure the finance company is aware in real time what's happening. That way if they get a phone call out of the blue from this guy wanting to make payment arrangements or something like that, they're aware that we're out here and we're rattling cages right now, so... Let's see what we've got in this given address. That's got to be it right there. The car blocking the back end of it. <laughs> I knew it had bigger wheels and just the way he's got the truck parked with the car. What I'm going to do is I'm going to block it in from the front, make contact with this guy and see which way he wants to go. Grab my steering wheel lock. Down, down in uh, <laughs> I want to go down uh, one in Ogden, pay payment. Okay, make a call. Is this your truck? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and call him real quick, and let's get it worked out. All right, call him. Okay. Okay, he should be calling you right now. I'm out here at the given address with the truck. Yeah, he says he wants to go to the Ogden store to make the payment. Uh, it, the, I've got the truck, so I mean, it's a repo. Oh, this is from the Ogden store? Oh no, I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna charge you extra for the mileage, no. Yeah, but if I don't have to haul the truck back down there, if I have to haul the truck back down there then there'll be more, but if you, if I drop it and, and, and leave it here, I'll just charge just the flat rate. Okay. Alright. Later. Alright, so I was just getting the plate off the vehicle because the the plate had changed because he's re-registered it in his name. And uh, he's getting on the phone right now with the finance company and going to make that payment and then 
that they gave us an alternate address. But we now can verify that it is here at the given address. Put our notes in while we're waiting. He's up there on the phone right now, talk to him. Yeah, you can tell just from the way he's parked the truck that he was expecting the repo today. He's got to pull in sideways. The car block at the back end of it, so he knows what the deal is. He ain't stupid. Okay, cool. Six all? Oh, seven three, huh? No, this is seven three, yeah. Same as yours. Mine's six eight. Here's okay. the nine here's the ninety-nine, isn't it? Oh, they changed it out? No, well that was a V ten. Oh, this is not this is the the, the, the Triton V ten? Yeah. Gotcha. I see I'd rather have the gas than the diesel. Really? It's quieter. Now I'm on a now, so. Okay. Now, because I was going to make a payment today, I sent him a text, but I, got, I guess I got to. Yeah, I think they were expecting it by yesterday. Yeah, I didn't get my check for last night. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I left my phone down at the noodles and company last night. Yeah, I like their uh, Parmesan crusted chicken. It's good stuff. The pot tie is awesome. Hey, that's I like that one too. Yeah. Hello. I am on a repo right now up in uh, uh, Roy. I've got the truck blocked in right now, and the guy's on the phone with. So let me call you back just a bit, okay, babe? All right, love you, bye. Hello. What's going on? Uh-huh. Oh, dude, this truck, this truck is gorgeous. It's completely tits out. Custom wheels, lift. It's a nice truck. I'll get a picture of it for you if you want me to. I, I, think, I think he's working, and he said he got his check last night, and I believe him that he wants to make the payments, but I do definitely think we should GPS it. Okay. 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 Okay, I'll grab one and put it on there. Yeah. Yes, but they're going to get a hook up this device. I, I really don't want that device on my truck. The device coming into the truck. Okay. Okay, so if I could, uh, if I make my 500, if I take that off? After, yeah, when I when my next season, next season. Okay. Yeah, that's that thing just makes me nervous. I just don't like that. They actually, they're actually not on. And I so still want to see it all the time. You won't see it. It's up under the dash. It just plugs into your ODB2 plug. There's a pigtail, and we just tuck it up under the dash. You won't even know it's there. Even with, if, how about if I have to program the truck? Nothing. This is just a pigtail. Your, your ODB2 OBD2 plug plugs into this, and that plugs into your, and all it's doing is pulling just power off of it. That's all it is. It doesn't do anything. The program. Oh, okay. I got, I, got the, I got this on my truck, too. And so the programmers and stuff, it's just a pigtail. Okay. And it's just pulling power off the pigtail, so. Okay. It won't affect anything. Exactly. Yeah, I know. No, I, I hear you. But 
Yeah. It makes like, it sound. What the heck is that? Thing? <laughs> I don't want that device on my truck. No, I, no, I hear you. I, I, I got one on mine so that if my truck ever gets stolen, well, it's got it's got its advantages too. I love that. Yeah, it's, it, that's what I want. I used to be pro too. Did you? Yeah, we pro for easy money. Oh, okay. And uh, I work for Ralph and uh, we used to, I used to go in and go drive the car. I was getting my get driver. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so, but when I can, get on. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. You know, hey, you know what you're doing. You're doing your job. Doing a job. So, yeah, I, I, I did you. Uh, yeah, that's probably why, why he had Joey do that. He's probably just having you cover the repo fee. And then once you get caught up and stuff, sounds like she's going to work with you on the other stuff. Alright, let's make sure we got lights on this thing. We do. I haven't, haven't really ever met anybody that's been happy about it. <laughs> so I can do all my program. Yep, yeah, this is just a jumper plug. This thing's literally just pulling power from... So yeah, this won't affect any program or anything. Get a power on the ground switch, that's it. There it goes, just like factory. Put your factory plug back on the front. But boom, you never even know it was there. Sweet. Actually, I probably have all your contact information. I already know your name. Yeah, yeah I got all your info. In, in the work order, so I'll put it to my phone, and the next time I got something up this way, I'll give you a call, maybe you go spot it for me, and then I'll come up, and what I like to do is I like to start, where first I have people just spot stuff, uh -huh. until I learn what you do know and don't know and stuff, so I'll come up and actually be with you on the repo and stuff, and then once I've seen that you can do a couple repos and stuff, then I just cut you loose, and just have you actually just go pick up the cars for me, yeah. just knock the door, demand the keys. Well, I, I usually, when Ralph, he gave me the paperwork and the keys, Yeah. They just make sure they, they got the money, give them that chance, if yep. they don't. And if they feel like you're going to run, yeah. snag the car. Snag the car. Yeah, that's what I was doing. That's why I had the steering wheel lock, because we disable the vehicle first so they can't take off, negotiate. If they're willing to negotiate, do the okay. negotiation. If they can't do the negotiation, you gotta, what you got to do, you got to hook and roll. Yeah, I, 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 what I did, too, is like, if I know they're like six months, mm -hmm. I knew they were like six months, and it's like, I can't, I can't believe I even went to school that far. I'm like, okay, what, what do you want me to do with it? Go so just snag the car. Yeah. So I, I call one of the, or, Oh my guy, my buddy that repo for me. Yeah. Or not repo, but record. Yeah, it has a lift. Come back and we'll pull it up and yep. grab it. Are you planning on putting a lift on this truck or are you? Sorry, not six inches. No, no, I mean a, a wheel lift. If I get the money. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to put it on there. Yeah. Because it's like, it's not like I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to drive it around. Yeah. Like, I'm going to Alright, later. Repo turns into meeting another repo man. Turns into a new contact. We get paid our repo fee plus putting a GPS device on the truck. And uh, he gets to keep his truck. He's talking about possibly putting a wheel lift on there. He says that's a six inch. Lift. Mine's got a four inch lift. But, anyhow, you never know what's going to happen when you go out on a repo. Who you're going to meet, you know, what they're going to know, what their past is, what their experience is. Every time we run, we just don't even know. That's why I always go out with an open mind. It keeps me alive.
Look at this bat. Why? About what? Oh, oh, don't worry. I, I talked to him. I saw what he was saying when he was on the phone with you. He's, he's cool now. It, it took, he was worried because he, he wants to do some programming on the truck and stuff, and he was afraid that having that thing in there was going to mess with the programming. And so I showed him the device and showed him that it's just a pigtail that pulls the power and the ground off of the pigtail. And I mean, he watched me put it in, and I he even let me borrow a tool to, to, to bolt it in right and everything. And so I said, you know, I said, you know it's in here. I said, don't dick with it. And he, and he was telling me he used to do repos for another company up here. And he was like, I'm, I'm actually interested in getting back into it, and da 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 da, and did, you know all that kind of stuff. But he's he's cool with the GPS device. I explained to him that I said that he, they don't track where you go, uh, you know, all, all the time and all that. I said the only reason it's here is if it comes down to the fact that you get so far behind them and they can't locate you again. I said, but if you mess with it between now and then, I said they'll have us come out and pick it up again. And he was like, oh no no, he's like I won't mess with it and stuff. And so he knows it's on there and he knows that I installed it and stuff. But it's I mean. It's, it's one of those things where I don't think he's going to mess with it. And, and, and I mean, yeah, he could mess with it if he got late enough, far enough behind. But, dude, that's a big-ass white truck. He's going to have a hell of a time. It's an apartment complex. So I, it, there's no garage where he lives. So so I, I, I've got him on my good side at this point, And I told him, I said, just be square with me. I'll be square with you, brother. You know, and so, but, yeah, he was tripped out at first about the GPS device. But he, I think he was more worried about it being in there because he thought it might mess with the programming on the truck. Yep. 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 Yeah. No, I and I got I got good pictures of the I know I got, I got pictures of the truck. I got the plate that's currently on it. I know what the setup is here at the house and everything. So I mean, if it comes up again, yeah, I'll be able to pop it. No problem. Ain't hey, no problem. Finance kept you calling. He's all worried about this guy knowing that the tracking device is on there and stuff, which really you don't want them to know that they're where it's located and all that kind of stuff because they can mess with them and it does take away from the uh, security of them. But <laughs> send me a text message. Anyhow, uh, we're over here at this other address for this silver Ford Taurus. Also in Roy, looks like you've got a employer. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It's a law firm down in Salt Lake. I actually know who these guys are. A buddy of mine helped start this company. They do credit repair. They hire a lot of people that they have a high turnover of the type of people that seem to always be on our repo blacklists. So I'm gonna go up here and make contact at the door and see what, yeah, whether she's even still living here or not. Two door, two car garage on the house. But at this point, what we want to do is we want to verify whether she's even living way up here anymore or not. Because the place that it's saying she works at is a good 40 minutes south of here, and it just doesn't make sense when people live that far away from where they work. At least not here in Utah. There might be parts of the country where that's very common, but up here, people typically live within about. 10 to 15 at the furthest 30 minutes from where they work. So we'll see what they say when they answer the door here. If they answer the door. Got a dog barking inside. You can usually tell when a dog barking either subsides or gets closer to the door that there's somebody walking towards the door because the dog will typically keep barking and follow the person walking towards the door. But if the barking remains deep in the house, that's usually a good indication that nobody's home. And in this case, the uh, barking is staying deep in the house. So my guess is nobody's home right now. One more knock. Looks like we're going to be 
be stopping by her place of employment in Salt Lake. It's right there in downtown Salt Lake. Maybe our car sitting over there. How are you doing? Good. You know the guys, people that live across the street here? Yeah. Did, did they, is there a girl over there that drives a silver Ford Taurus? No. No? Yeah, but no, it's uh, only the car. I'm see it there. Uh, I got my finger, but I'll go see the lady because now it's uh, a tourist. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Did she used to live there? The one with the silver Taurus? Yeah. But how long has it been since you've seen that car? How many months? No, I don't see it for a long time. Right? Long time? Since, yeah. since last year? Or the, maybe? You know, like a couple months. Oh, a couple months? Yeah. I think she might have moved to Salt Lake. Yeah, there's a tourist uh, blue one, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, yeah, awesome. Seven, 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 eight, eight, seven, eight, eight, eight months. Because I'm here for like 10 years. So I know. That's but it's been about seven or eight months? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I saw a neighbor across the street detailing his vehicle. A Hispanic gentleman. I went over there and talked to him briefly. And he said he's been in that house for 10 years and he says he remembers the Taurus. And it's been about seven or eight months since it's lived there. We ran a skip locate on her. We came up with some newer addresses down in Spring City, Utah, which is a little teeny town down there near Ephraim, where we did that double header on that one with the uh, lady that's having the baby on that black uh, Honda Accord. Uh, Spring City's a little small town just right down there in that area. Looks like that might be where her family's from and stuff, where she might be from. So what I'm going to do now is if I jump off the freeway in Salt Lake at this place of employment, I'm going to call them because I've got a good number for them. And I'm going to verify if she's even still working for them or not. And if it's a good place of employment, then we'll stop by and see if the car's there. If it's not, she's a total skip right now. We'll keep working it accordingly. It's repoing.